بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهدي لولا أن هدانا الله Dear brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله First I would like to congratulate my dear brothers and sisters in advance although it might be so tomorrow or the next day uh, uh, it, it has yet to be determined, but we are on the verge of entering the month of Ramadan, and I would like to congratulate you in advance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the blessing to benefit from every single moment of the upcoming early, the, the early month of Ramadan. The discussion since uh, so it started last week about the Seminar of Sha'ban, delivered by the Prophet, peace be upon him the last Friday of the month of Sha'ban, and it was focused on the preparation for the month of Ramadan and what we need to do in the month of Ramadan. I covered in the last session those instructions that the Prophet, peace be upon him, provided that somehow they were more related to individual responsibilities. The, the man-divine relationship uh, what we have to do in relationship in matter of worship, in matter of the rituals, in matter of our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the matter of repentance, the matter of having the pure heart, pure intention when entering the month of Ramadan. And I mentioned that the however, the major part of the lecture, maybe, or the most important part of the lecture is focused on the uh, social responsibilities, the social aspects of the uh, uh, responsibilities that we have in the month of Ramadan, the responsibilities that uh, we need to pay attention to in our spiritual journey in the month of Ramadan. It's a, a matter of not man-divine relationship only, rather it's a matter of man-man relationship, matter of social interaction, social relationship. It's very important to pay attention to, to this um, concept that in Islamic thought, as I, as I highlighted in my previous lectures, that the matter of uh, the, the salvation is not only something achieved by faith. Unlike some other religious traditions, that's how they highlight it. But the Islamic thought is a matter of faith and action. We have in so many verses of Quran this emphasis. So the spiritual journey would be only possible, we can only embrace and embark, embark on this journey if we pay attention to the way that we act, it's not only a matter of faith, not only a matter of belief, rather it's a matter of acting. And it is also mentioned in the verse of Quran, chapter Ma'adah, Ma verse 48. It is one of the very reasons that we are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us on earth in his divine test, divine evaluation. But the verse of Quran says, Walawsha Allah is part of the, the, the verse 38, 48. Walawsha Allah la The reason that you are divided in different nations, different ethnic groups, so on and so forth, is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to try you, to evaluate you. How each of you, with different levels of the provisions that you have in your hand, how you act, how you use them, in what for what purpose do you use them? And the verse of Quran continues, فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَاتِ This is the point. If you want to be successful in passing the divine test, you need to be competitive 
in doing good deeds. It's a competition. Competition for doing good deeds. Competition for doing whatever is the best in outcome for ourselves and for the community. This is the month that we are expected to have a full attention to this competition. This is the month that the Prophet, peace be upon him, in his lecture, in this lecture, advises us to be more careful about our actions, to make sure that we don't waste this opportunity. As much as we can, we have to use every moment that we have to add to the treasure of the good deeds that we have to to rely on in hereafter for our salvation. So the, the what is interesting here is that if you look at the order of the instruction that Prophet peace be upon him provides in the Sermon of Sha'ban, you see that he starts mainly with those instructions that are relevant to social responsibilities and then goes to the one that, that is about the man divine responsibilities. Our responsibility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in matter of worship and matter of ritual so on and so forth. It highlights the one of the fundamental perspective, one of the fundamental characteristics of Islamic faith which is focused on the society, on the well-being of the society. I mentioned in some other lectures many instances that we have that uh, proves and supports this understanding. For example, one of the hadiths that I mentioned before is the one that Maymun ibn Mihran, he narrates, he says that I was with Hassan ibn Ali, alayhi salam, and we were in a takaf. We were sitting in the mosque of the Prophet, or maybe it was the uh, <coughs> Mecca, maybe it was in the uh, Masjid al-Haram. This is, I was there, and we were in a takaf, and then someone came to Hassan ibn Ali, to Imam al-Mushtaba, and insisted to Imam, O oh, Imam, inna fulanan lafu alayya malun wa yuridu an yahbusani. Someone, I'm indebted to someone financially, and he wants to put me in prison. He wants to arrest me for that. Wallah, ma indi malun fa'adi an yas. Imam Ali said, I don't have right now something to pay for for your debt. So the amount of your debt is not something that I can pay it. Then the guy asked, "Fakallimhu." Please, if that's the case, just talk to him. I know that he respects you. I know that if you ask him to give me some time, he would do that. So, Mingmun ibn Mahram says, Imam, when he heard the request, فَلَمِسَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُنَ عَلَيْهِ He started putting on the, his shoes. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ يَا بْنَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَنَسِيتَكْ أَنَسِيتَ أَعْتِكَافَكْ Did you forget that you are in Atikaf? You are not supposed to leave the mosque. If you leave the mosque, Atikaf would be void, invalid. It is the, the moment which was response is very important in understanding the Islamic, the, the theme in Islamic thought when it comes to such matters. Muhammad alayhi salam says, Lam ansa, I didn't forget. Walakinni sami'atu abi alayhi salam yaqul qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam man sa'a fi hajata akhihi al-muslim. I heard my father. And he narrated from the Prophet, peace be upon him, that whoever tries to help a brother in faith, a sister in faith, to solve the problem that they are facing. It's like as if he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 9,000 years, doing every day, doing prayers, and at the night being awake, doing uh, mustahab prayers and other type of prayers. Imam's response wants to teach 
Maimoun ibn Mihran, that there are priorities. Yes, I was in Etikaf. It, it is one of the most recommended, encouraged practices in Islam. It's a matter of one of the those words that those practices that in uh, that shows the, the uh, intensifies one's relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. However, when it comes to social responsibilities, Islamic perspective emphasizes the importance of of social responsibilities. If there is an overlap, and one has to pick the priority, it's a matter of society, the well-being of the community, and caring for the others that takes the most important position in Islamic perspective. So this is not just a month for fasting, for prayers. That is the month for to care for the others. It is the this spiritual journey that we are embarking on has an inner journey one's relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an outer journey, one's relationship with the others, the other people in the society, other members of the community. It's a must, it's a must of selflessness. It's a must that we can prove to ourselves that we can sacrifice our interest to help our brothers and sisters and the others, not to be selfish, not to only think of ourselves, in the advices that the Prophet, peace be upon him, provides in this part about the social responsibilities, you see there are two types of instructions. What type are concerned about correcting our behavior, our moral character, correct the way that we interact with people, our moral attitude. The second type of instructions are concerned about those kind of actions that benefit the community. And the Prophet peace be upon him highlights the importance of paying attention to both of these categories, both both types of social responsibilities. The way that I I interact with people, my attitude, my behavior, and the way that I act in helping the community. When it comes to correcting our behavior, our moral personality, character, characteristics, the Prophet, peace be upon him, encourages us to improve our overall attitude, to behave with people with compassion, with mercy, with care, Oh people, whoever improves his interaction with people in this month, behave with people with, compa with compassion, kindly. He would be granted the permission to cross the Surat bridge in the day of judgment upon which many of people they fall down, they slip, they can't cross the bridge, but you will be granted a pass to go through the bridge if you, if I, we try our best in the month of Ramadan to have the best possible attitude towards the people, respecting others. Interacting with them, compassion and care. And this is why, and we have this notion, it's not only about the month of Ramadan, we have this concept in Islamic teachings that we have it from Imam al Baghir alayhi salam that he says that in Akmal al Mu'minina Iman and Ahsanum Akhlaqan. If you want to find the ones that who are the most perfect in faith, look at the ones who are the most perfect in the interaction with the people. The one who are the most kindest, the one who interacts softly with respect, with compassion, they are the ones who are also the best in faith. Someone who is harsh 
someone who is inflexible in the way that they treat people, they are for sure they didn't achieve the higher levels of faith and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, it had to be reflected in their moral behavior. The other instruction that the Prophet peace be upon him has, has about the correcting our behavior and our moral characteristic is to be careful about how we talk to the others. So it comes under the same umbrella of interacting with people with compassion and respect. To be careful about how we talk to the others in matter of speaking, using words, al السَنَتَكُمْ Watch your tongue. This is the month that we have to be careful about what words do we use, how do we speak to the people. And we have to be reminded that many types of sins, and especially the grave sins, those, what we call it, al-muharramatul kabira, grave sins, these are the ones that a mostly committed by tongue. It's a matter of ghaybah, backbiting, matter of torn accusation, matter of kilb, lie, matter of al halifu kaldiban, it's a matter of, for example, who swear uh, by lie. And so, for example, the matter of Shah Usir to expose the secrets of the life of the others, the private life, life of the others, so on and so forth, matter of humiliating and insulting others. These are all kind of type of sins that we commit them with tongue. They are busy, very busy, very easy to commit, but very difficult later on to deal to it, to, to take responsibility for. We have this narration from Ali alayhi salam. So he mentions that Someone, sometimes it is possible that one single word, wrong word, a single insult that we give to someone, a single word that would mock someone, humiliate someone, would be enough to take away a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted upon us. For a while, just one single word. This is why we have in hadith from the Prophet, peace be upon him, in which he said, Tarkul ghibah, to avoid backbiting others, to avoid talking behind the back of the others, is Ahabu ila Allah azza wa jal min ashrati alaf rak'at al tatawan. Allah loves this, loves the refrain from committing ghibah, then someone who doesn't refrain from it, instead he does 10,000 for example units of prayer, rak out prayers. The Prophet says, if you ask me, instead of doing these 10,000 units of prayers, try to Control yourself, control your tongue, not to talk behind others' back, other people's back. And that's what we had, I mentioned in the previous session at the end, it was the, the, the Prophet's advice to Imam Ali alayhi salam that the best thing the month of Ramadan is to avoid committing sins. That's the most important thing. Then the Prophet peace be upon him also highlights when it comes to the matter of the improving our moral characteristic is matter of being mindful about what we hear, what we watch. It has both social, social and individual implications. It's a matter of, for example, when it comes to social implications, social responsibilities, 
for me to not uh, participate in a gathering that people are ruining some someone's reputation, in a, in a gathering that people are accusing someone, in a gathering that people are mocking someone, in a gathering that people are talking behind someone. So to make sure that I don't listen to those words and I don't be complicit, because if I say I stay there and I listen and I don't object, I'm complicit in the same action. We have in some other narration says the one who listens to a reba, the one to listen to uh, a believer or someone being backbited and doesn't object, is a complicit in the same sense. So the Prophet peace be upon him. He advises us, First of all, it's a matter of also a matter of being mindful of what we look at. Again, it is one, one aspect of the social responsibilities, not to look at something that is pri uh, the, the private life of the other people who do not like you, who do not give you permission to look at something that belongs to them. Be mindful of when looking, for example, in interaction with the other genders, to be modest, to be respectful. And also the Prophet highlights, not only watch your eyes, but also watch your ears, as I explained. It is, again, this is the hadith from Ali alayhi salam, he mentions, the one who listens to Ghibah, the one who listens to one being backbited, he is like the one who is committing that sin. He is like the one who is committing the sin of Ghibah and backbite the others. Just to listen to it and not to oppose it, we are complicit in the action. And we must be reminded by the verses of Quran, for example, one of the verses of Quran that we have in chapter Abbas, verse 24. And human being must watch what how they feed themselves. So and a mystical interpretation of the of the verse, although the uh, main interpretation interprets differently, but a mystical understanding of the verse is that it's not only talking about the physical. Uh, food is also, also talking about the spiritual food. So it means that one has to be mindful about how one feeds their souls. And how do we feed our souls through two different doors, through our eyes and our ears? These are the doors to our heart. These are the main instruments through which we feed our heart, the, what we look at. What we hear is the kind of the thought that we get through them. These are the ones that feeds our heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us according to this interpretation that we have to be mindful and, what, and be careful about how do we feed our heart and our soul. <clears throat> we have this narration from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and he tells to his companions, Ibn Sanan, he narrates from Muhammad Sadiq alayhi salam, that he said that, كان المسيح عليه السلام يقول لأصحابه, it was Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, who was saying to his companions, وإياكم والنظرة, be careful of the one single additional look, that look that you know it is unnecessary, that look that I do it out of the temptation, out of lust. It is just one additional look that is not for the right purpose. Can be enough to put the seed of the temptation, of the lust in one's heart, leading to much severe consequences later. So the, the advice is to watch your eye, your eyes. 
to wash our eyes, to wash our ears. That's what the Prophet peace be upon him says that it's a matter of improving our moral characteristic in the month of Ramadan, purifying our heart. So these are some advices that, as I mentioned, when it comes to social interactions, they are more about the one's own moral characteristic, about how do we behave with people, how do we talk with them, what do we look at it, what do we hear, to what we listen. But the second category, the second type of these social responsibilities are those actions, those deeds that we do it to benefit the community. And as I mentioned, the verse of Quran is the, the main purpose of us being here in this world is to compete in doing such actions. And the month of Ramadan is the peak of that competition. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he advises us, This is the month to help the ones in need, the most vulnerable people in the community, especially financially. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, put a specific attention, emphasis in this month to help the needy people. So, although that many of us, we have this habit, this uh, medicine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to help people, maybe in other occasions during the year, but this is the special moment that whatever we do, we have to, to double or triple or even more our efforts in helping the the people in need in the month of Ramadan. So the Prophet says, I mentioned before the, some of the distinctions between faqir and miskin, why the Prophet distinguishes them. The faqir is the one who cannot, who does not, whose uh, income does not suffice for the whole year. He is working, he has income, but it may only afford for nine months, 10 months. So he, is, he, he always has uh, shortcomings in meeting his needs, his family's needs. These are the people that so they call, uh, call faqir. But miskin are the ones that they are in more severe situation. They are the ones that they cannot even afford their daily needs. It's not only that they cannot afford the annual expense, but they are right now even struggling with their daily needs. The Prophet says, pay attention to both. For sure, the priority goes to the to the latter, but also the former, the first group, the, the fogara also must be, we must attend to them. So we have some other narrations that encourage us, specifically in the month of Ramadan, to help the needy people. So for example, we have a narration that uh, we have in Islam of Al-A'mal, Sheikh al-Saduqi narrates from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, that man tasaddaq fi shahr Ramadan bis sadaqatin sarraf Allahu anhu s-sab'ayn al-naw'an min al-bala'a. It is just to encourage us that whoever gives sadaqa, whoever helps needy people in the month of Ramadan, Allah would protect them against 70 type of catastrophes, type of difficulties that may happen to someone. So one type of this helping the people, vulnerable people, is helping the people who are struggling financially, the poor people, fuqara, masakin. The other group is those people who are working under our authority. So at the time, they were slaves, servants, Nowadays, so we have sometimes this matter of, for example, someone would be employer who has hundred, dozen employees under their control. Servants they have, they have people working for them. 
The Prophet peace be upon him says, "وَمَنْ خَفَّفَ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرَ عَمَّا مَلَكَتِ يَمِينُهُ خَفَّفَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ هِسَابَهُ Whoever in the month of Ramadan decides to go easy on the people under his power, under his control and authority, and the employees and the servants, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would go easy in judging him in the day of judgment. Allah would forgive many of the mistakes, many of the uh, trivial sins, so on and so forth. If someone was also easygoing towards the people under his power, authority in the month of Ramadan, And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, continues. This is important advice because the Prophet reiterated, repeated this advice twice in the lecture. That care for the orphans. Look for the orphans care for them you do that there would be a day that you would not be around anymore there would be a day that you would leave this material world and because you want the, you were the one taking care or of the orphans of the other people allah would determine that other people would be like you caring of your children in their difficulties in their struggles Allah would make sure that your children would not be alone the same way that you didn't leave the children of the others, the orphans, alone in your lifetime. So we have many so instructions in Islamic teachings about uh, caring for the uh, orphans, even in the chapter Fajr, uh, verse 17, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those ungrateful servants who would be doomed to the hell. And for example, the, the verse 16 says, وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا When we, when his financial circumstances become, becomes difficult, he struggles, he says, you know, Allah just left me alone. He humiliated me. The, the, verse, the next verse continues, no. Your difficulties had a different reason. Because kalla balla tukrimun al yatim. One of them is that you are the one who refrained from caring for orphans. Allah, there was a time that Allah gave you many provisions. You had the financial means to care for the others, especially for the orphans, and you didn't do it. So and Allah took it away from you because you didn't deserve it. So this is also a very important point that the Prophet peace be upon him highlights about the social responsibilities the month of Ramadan. And he emphasizes, highlights of man akrama fihi yatim and akramahullah yawm al another, another part of the lecture, the sermon. The Prophet peace be upon him says, whoever take cares of the orphans of the others, Allah would take care of him. Allah would uh, have mercy, compassion. Allah would treat him with grace in the day of judgment. So again, it's very important matter. The next teaching, the next advice that the Prophet peace be upon him provides that comes under the uh, acting for the benefit of the community. So we talk about those kind of actions that are about helping the people in need, vulnerable people, about the poor people, fuqara, masakin, about the people that they are under our authority, our servants, our employees, about the orphans, that they need someone to take care of them. The, the second uh, type of the actions that would benefit the community, the Prophet peace upon him highlights in the month of Ramadan, 
is just to make sure that we do not hurt others. Not it's not only a matter of caring for someone, it's a matter of also being careful not to hurt someone. So the Prophet peace be upon him says, Oman kaffa sharrahu kaffallahu anhu ghadabahu yawm yalqah. And whoever the Muslim of Ramadan makes sure that he doesn't hurt someone. He doesn't insult someone. doesn't break someone's heart. doesn't take away someone's right. doesn't violate someone's right. Whoever ensures that his actions does not hurt others in the month of Ramadan, in the day of judgment, he would be protected from Allah's anger. So this is also very important. So it's not only a matter of caring for others, but also a matter of being careful not to hurt others. That's also one of the actions that would uh, benefit the community. Again, it comes under the umbrella of what the Prophet, Prophet peace be upon him, mentioned as the most important thing in the month of Ramadan. The most important thing is to avoid committing sin rather than just doing mustahabbat. It's most important to make sure that we don't commit actions that would violate divine commands. The, another type of the, these actions that benefits the community that the Prophet from him highlights about social responsibilities in the month of Ramadan is to show compassion and care to the other members of our community, to the other to brothers and sisters of the faith, for example. So it comes on, it comes under this uh, Discussion, the instruction to give iftar to other believers. When it comes to the giving iftar, it is not restricted only to the poor people. You invite someone for iftar, a brother in faith, who is not a poor person, who is not faqir. Maybe he is even financially completely uh, strong financially has no problem, still the advice to invite brothers and sisters in faith for iftar and hospitality is one of the important advices that we have in narration in the month of Ramadan. So we have the Prophet peace be upon him saying in this sermon, Ayyuhan nas man fattala minkum sa'iman mu'minan fi hadha shahr. O people, whoever gives iftar, to one single believer who is fasting the month of Ramadan, كان له بذلك عند الله إتق النسمة. Allah would reward him with so accepting just the single act of giving a thought to someone as if the person uh, freed his slave in the sake of for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So because at the time uh, uh, freeing a slave was very expensive. Only wealthy people could do that. But the Prophet said, if the month of Ramadan, if you give iftar to someone, that would be equal to freeing a slave. And it can be also a mean for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive your past sins. So some of the companions who were poor, who didn't have much, so in a uh, matter of, for example, hosting a party, hosting a, cele a celebration, a feast for the brothers and sisters in the month of Ramadan to give iftar. So the, the Prophet was asked, But unfortunately, not every one of us is able to invite someone for iftar. We are financially, some of us, we are struggling even for our daily needs. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then, highlights the important something very important it's not about what you give it's about the action it's about showing the care to the community avoid the punishment of Allah the day of judgment even if only by giving just a piece of a date just with a little water, that's it. It's not about how much you give. So everyone 
has its own circumstances. Someone can, yes, for someone who is able to uh, provide better means to the ones who are fasting. So that's what is expected. For someone, someone who doesn't have the provisions, someone who is financially not able to do that, the Prophet says it is about the action, even if it means just giving a piece of a date. So again, looking at the wisdom of these instructions, so the Prophet peace upon him wants to strengthen the social bond among the believers, the month of Ramadan. And these instructions of inviting others for iftar is those actions that makes this this bonds and stronger. When I get the invitation from a brother in faith, that's actually uh, uh, heart heartwarming. That makes a kind of connection between us. Then I invite him, for example, invite them in response. That's something a teaching that would intensify our social interaction with one another. The social interaction that's built on uh, hospitality, on grace, on compassion. The Prophet, peace upon himself, says also, so when it comes to matter of the showing compassion to the others, there are some groups that we have to pay more attention to them. It's to pay respect to elderly to show more compassion to the children because they want they are they are the ones who yearns yearns more they are the ones who most likely to be neglected so that's why the prophet said in this month pay more attention to the ones who are neglected in the community to the elderly who may just look for the children to just call them once a day just to for them uh, those elderly who, who just become so happy if they see uh, just someone from the family remembers them visiting them so this is the most to show that compassion to show them that we care for them we care for the vulnerable in the community we care for the elderly we care for the children and also to see the most to care for the family which we have the most responsibility about. That's what the Prophet says. This is the month to pay a specific attention to the family members of our community. The closer they are, the, the, the higher is the responsibility. The more significant is the responsibility. It's the verse of Quran, chapter Nisa, verse 1. What الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day of judgment about the ones who would be asked how you treated them. Well, arham about your relatives. Did you pay their rights? Did you pay, did you care for them as you were expected to do? So this is the month to also intensify our efforts to take care of our family, to show that we love them, to show that we care for them. This is also one of the advices that the Prophet repeated, repeated it twice in his sermon, like the advice about uh, taking care of orphans. He also mentions, mentions in the second time, man wasala fihi rahimahu, whoever makes a connection to his relatives. If someone, if for whatever reason we have some misunderstanding with, between us and some members of our family, and we try to mend it, the month of Ramadan, to fix it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, day of judgment would mend his relationship with you. Similarly, if there are shortcomings from our side, Allah would forgive. Allah would take care of us. The day of judgment. But on the other side, the opposite side, whoever cut the ties to family members, whoever neglects his, their responsibilities against their, their 
the members of their family, their family, their relatives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qata Allah and hu rahmatahu yawmi Allah. Allah would cut his mercy from having the day of judgment. So these are, you see, to how the Prophet, peace be upon him, emphasizes on social responsibilities in the month of Ramadan. He prioritizes this kind of responsibilities by mentioning them first, indicating them first in his sermon, by sometimes repeat, repeating some of them twice to highlight how important and significant they are. Those kind of responsibilities that first concerns our own moral characteristic when we interact with others, our behavior, how we talk to them, how we look to them, how to, what to listen to, and also the responsibilities about how do we act with the people, taking care for them, the most vulnerable people in the community, financially, the people that who need, not financial means, but they need our love, the elderly, the children, the family members. These are the ones that we have to, to pay specific attention. We have to pay specific attention to taking care of our brothers and sisters in the month of Ramadan, showing our love and our care for them. The lecture finishes with uh, something that I would like to highlight it uh, at the end of uh, today's discussion, which we, uh, we are wrapping off the Sermon of Sha'ban. It was after the excerpt that I discussed last session at the end of the lecture, Ali Ali Salam says, I stood up and I asked a question about what is the best action to do in the month of Ramadan. The Prophet said the best action is to avoid committing sins. And then the Prophet, after saying this, uh, Ali Ali Salam says, Thumma baka. I saw that the Prophet is crying. Why you are crying? He said, Prophet said, Because of what would happen to you in this month. It is like I see it, and you are performing your prayer. And someone who is the most miserable person in the in the in the history of human being from the beginning to the end. And he hits you, the sword, and the blood would cover your beard. So the Prophet prophesizes what would happen to Ali in the month of Ramadan. But what, what is very important even here is Ali Salam's reaction. So if I was in that circumstances, I would ask about the detail, why this happens? Who is doing this? When this would happen? But these are not what Ali Salam is concerned about. Ali does not ask any of these questions. You only ask one thing. Is it the case that when this happened, I'm on the right path? My faith is still protected. And the Prophet says, Yes, yes, you are on the right path. So this is the concern of Ali. He's not concerned about whether he lives or die, how he, he would die, when he would die. He is concerned that he would die on the, this, in the, on this situation and on the status that Allah would be satisfied with him. This is what we need also to uh, pay attention to the month of Ramadan. It is the month that we, we have just to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be satisfied with our actions whether it's about our relationship with him, our worship, our rituals, and whether it's about our relationship with his creatures, 
respecting others, loving others, showing compassion, helping the others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and the blessing the upcoming month of Ramadan to be the best month of Ramadan so far in our life and to fulfill his instruction that the Prophet peace be upon him provided to us to benefit to, uh, to benefit the, the most and to uh, find the best way to embark on this spiritual journey, inshallah. Peace be upon